Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining the Maryland Chamber Foundation for our continuing webinar series. My name is Whitney Harmel. I'm the Vice President of Membership and Development for the Maryland Chamber of Commerce and the Maryland Chamber Foundation. We are so excited to be joined again by Secretary Kelly Scholes from the Maryland Department of Commerce. Um, she will be speaking, providing an update, as well as taking some questions um, from the attendees today. Um, our Vice President of Government Affairs from the Maryland Chamber of Commerce, Ashley Duckman, will be monitoring the chat feature. We will be very quick with this housekeeping as we only have Secretary Scholes until I think 11 o'clock this morning. So please, um, we are asking that all attendees stay in muted mode um, so that you are just listening in. Take a look at that symbol. Please mute your mics. Um, also be aware that we are recording this session and if your webcam is on, um, it is possible that you're um, being recorded. And so if you wish to turn off your camera, please look for that symbol and go ahead and turn off your camera. And we are encouraging you to use the chat feature to ask questions um, to the secretary. Ashley will be monitoring and bringing the secretary some questions that were not only submitted ahead of time, um, but questions that are, are general business questions for the secretary. If we do not get to your question, please feel free to email the Maryland Chamber at the email address on your screen. And as always, we are continuing to record these webinars and add them to our um, COVID-19 resources page. A quick reminder to please mute yourselves um, so that we can eliminate the background noise as much as possible. Speaking of the COVID-19 resources page, um, we are providing new resources on a daily basis, both on the state and federal level, um, as well as webinars and conversations that we're having Two major um, documents that you can download include the Renew Maryland Initiative, um, which is a collection of policy proposals um, that will assist us um, as a state in the recovery, and then the Safe Workplace uh, Best Practices and Baselines for Reopening Maryland. I encourage you to take a few moments of your day to check out these documents, especially as we get ready and continue with the reopening process. So with that, it is my great honor to um, bring back to the stage, um, so to speak, um, Secretary Kelly Scholes. And um, Secretary, we are just so happy that you're here, and we look forward to this update and conversation with you. So with that, I will turn it over. Great. Thank you so much. I, I very much appreciate the Chamber for inviting us here today to be able to address your membership. Um, very, very important. Um, constituency, obviously, for the Department of Commerce and for the administration in general. So um, I very much appreciate this. I'll say this is, um, this is, I guess, our new way of doing business. And I'm sorry that we can't all be together in person, but we um, have continued to routinely do these types of calls. Uh, we started at the end of March, um, about a week after we left the building. And I do, I've done, uh, gosh, over 90 of these calls at this point in time, uh, directly communicating with the business community associations, legislators, uh, local officials, federal officials, et cetera, and their constituencies. So it's always nice to be able to give some updates. So I appreciate that. Um, I just wanna talk a little bit about uh, where we have been at the Department of Commerce over the last 10 weeks or so. Obviously our mission has been adjusted a little bit, um, actually a lot where the Department of Commerce is typically your agency to be able to look at growing and expanding businesses in the state, attracting new businesses to the state. And at this point in time, we're, we're on a similar mission to support businesses, but at this point in time, we're working on sustainability. And so everybody at the department has been working towards that effort overall. Um, I, I do want to leave time for questions, so I'm gonna give um, an update as to where we are with the industry-specific advisory groups and uh, where we are with that, and then I can take questions um, specific to some of the other topics after. Uh, we worked near the end of March uh, to be able to start conversations with businesses and industry groups. Uh, first, with those that are associated with tourism, understanding that those um, those businesses were the first, most immediately hard hit industry groups. So 
we received a document um, at the end of March from AEI, from the American Enterprise Institute, and a gentleman by the name of Scott Gottlieb who had drafted that report, which talked about a phased in approach to reopening and recovery within the um, economic um, sec sectors of, of the state. And we adopted that immediately as our internal guidance to be able to have some uh, well outlined um, conversations with the tourism industry. And so that was our first ad advisory group that we had uh, put together. Uh, within that tourism group, we noticed that obviously there's, there's a lot that, that occurs within that idea of tourism. So we broke it down to smaller advisory groups as well um, focusing on restaurants and bars, accommodations, retailers, attractions, tourism, transportation, uh, destination, and sports. And then immediately after that, we started our next advisory group, which was manufacturing. In the state, some manufacturers were open, depending on their essential status, and many of them were closed. We also then um, expanded into professional and financial services, small businesses like the mom and pop shops, but also those personal one-on-one -on -one, um, services like the hair salons, tanning, uh, tattoo parlors, um, those types of um, industries, and then um, construction and development. We also um, recently, um, within the last three weeks, we discovered that our um, arts community within the state could also, and who the Maryland Arts Council falls under the um, uh, State Department of Commerce, uh, would, would like some guidance as well. So we quickly put together a Maryland Art Recovery Advisory Group. So the Department of Commerce oversees 13 of these advisory groups. There were two additional advisory groups that the governor had asked for the governor's office of community initiatives to put forth, and that was related to faith-based organizations and then also nonprofit organizations. We do realize that every industry has unique challenges and may have um, unique solutions to ensure that there's going to be a clean and healthy workplace. So as we started our conversations with these advisory group members, we said that there was going to be a couple of different approaches, but the, the most immediate approach was going to be the need to talk about what it looks like to reopen in a healthy and safe way, uh, not only for the employees that were going to be going back to work, but also for the general public. And so the reports were distributed to the department um, on May 1st, and they were then forwarded to the governor's office for a full review. And so we continue to review those. And you have seen documents that have come out, one page documents that yes. have provided a, a level of guidance for those industries that the governor has announced in his phase one of the back to business um, approach. So you can find the guidance for the industry specific organizations on our website, which is the back to business website. And you can see that at open.maryland.gov slash back to business. And these are really great resources for the businesses as we move forward in order for them to look at what that safe and healthy opening looks like. You can also find on the back to business page a, a, a back to business a pledge for those businesses that would, would like to provide some additional reassurance. Uh, reassurance to their employees and to the general public. And we've had thousands of people that have gone onto the website to print out this back to business pledge, which states some of the obvious, I think that we've all been working on over the last several months of, of looking to see how we would reopen, like creating an environment that allows for physical distancing, ensuring that the place is routinely cleaned and encourage employees to frequently wash their hands, provide flexibility to the employees, provide training and education to the employees, uh, reduce and disinfect as many high touch surfaces as possible. And then of course, um, being able to follow um, additional guidance provided by the CDC and the Maryland Department of Health. What, what we are anticipating is that there's going to be a need to continue to reassure 
uh, those that we come in contact with that business owners are looking very seriously and taking uh, the, the cleanliness and, and the social distancing seriously as they move forward and provide a level of comfort for those to come back in more, 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 public, more public places. So we're looking forward to that. Um, obviously, the reopening, the, the governor has talked about a three-stage plan to gradually relax the restrictions on, re on the reopen phase, and he has classified them between low risk, medium risk, and high risk. And the first stage is that um, phase one that we have all seen that has come together um, last week when the governor made his announcements um, about that first phase. This has been in his Roadmap to Recovery documents. Uh, from the very beginning of this roadmap to recovery, really talking about those industries that would be in that first low risk phase. And so I think that we are there. Going into additional phases, which um, he has identified as uh, necessities and the president has decided or declared necessities was looking at a 14 day continued downward trend um, or at least not spikes that would happen in between the different phases of recovery. So um, we, are, we, are, we are hopeful that we continue to have those downward trends and there's not any spikes as we, as we move forward. Um, going into stage two, it will be that medium risk. Um, some of those industry groups that are in that, um, uh, that have been in that stage two, that, that medium risk, is the inclusion of reopening of some of the bars and restaurants with some restrictions, um, looking at childcare, um, increasing the, the transit schedules, um, some uh, limit, raising some of the limitations on the cap of social gatherings, um, indoor gym and fitness classes, et cetera. So um, a lot of those industry groups have been covered within our advisory groups. And so we're very thankful for the business community to to reach out to us so that we can have um, some guidance for the governor's recovery team as we move forward and the governor continues to make some additional um, recommendations and announcements about additional reopening phases. And I, I know that um, there were several questions that had been sent in by members of the chamber and I'm happy to address those if, if you choose to do that at this point in time or um, I just don't want to take up all the time with my narrative. Sure. Thank you, Madam Secretary. This is Ashley Duckman. I am the Vice President of Government Affairs for the Chamber. And hopefully you guys can hear me, first of all. Um, but secondly, I just want to, again, thank you and your team for your partnership, your collaboration all of the time. But in particular, um, as we navigate these new and uncharted waters together, as you know, um, we are a group of about 4,500 businesses across the state, uh, small to large, all industry sectors. And we always very much appreciate the ability to work with you and your team and to chat together in forums like this. Um, before we move into the bulk of our q and I, I did receive in advance a number of really industry specific questions, which we're not going to get into here because of the short amount of time that we have. But I did want to ask if you had any advice on a place where some of these businesses can go with their more specific industry specific questions, um, you know, seeking clarification uh, from your team on any number of topics. Absolutely. So it's very important for people to know that they can send any questions to secretary.commerce at maryland.gov. At secretary.commerce at maryland.gov. And that is an email that we set up immediately um, upon the closure so that any business could ask any question related to their business. And we have multiple agencies that are participating and helping to answer those questions for us if it's not something directly related to the Department of Commerce, but if it's a Department of Labor question or a Department of Health question. And we have um, a, a good resource there for any business. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, and just for our attendees who are all on mute, if you do have a specific question for the secretary, um, we will be accepting them through the chat feature to the extent that we have time. We did receive a number in advance that I'm going to come through. But if you did have a question that we um, can maybe get to, please submit it in our chat feature. 
Um, one question we got a lot of, and we've been fielding a lot at the chamber, is specific to the advisory groups that you talked about, um, Madam Secretary. And a question that's come up now that we're moving into phase one and thinking about future phases of recovery is, how might those advisory groups, well, first, how are the recommendations going to be utilized for those industries that are not yet open? And then also, is there a plan possibly to leverage these groups moving forward um, into future phases of recovery, perhaps for um, policy specific to industries and, and how we're going to address recovery in the future? And then also, sorry, this is a bit of a loaded question, but we're getting a lot of questions about how businesses and business groups might get involved in that process if there's still the ability to. Sure. So the advisory groups were set up by uh, the staff at the Department of Commerce, looking at those stakeholders that um, when we had the request from the governor to start these conversations um, and for the Department of Commerce to come up with some recommendations, we had our staff reach out to those stakeholders and um, uh, industry associations, et cetera, that they would have normal interaction with. Um, so a lot of those advisory group members are folks that have had an ongoing relationship with the, our staff at the Department of Commerce, and, and that's worked out very well. Um, so answering the loaded question, uh, we are always looking for additional group members if people you know, would, would like to be a part of that, and they can send their requests into that secretary.commerce um, email link, and then we can, we can follow up with that. But how are the recommendations being utilized? Um, I would say that immediately upon receiving the recommendations um, for the reopening plans, uh, the governor read all of them over the weekend and he had you know, opinions on some of them and he thought that they were really great and he was really impressed that the industry groups were, were taking a very serious look at you know, ways in which they can be proactive and be a part of the process. So um, I think, those recommendations are certainly um, making it to the governor's office, the governor's um, recovery team, and taken into full consideration. There has been, and there will continue to be, some additional review of the Maryland Department of Health just to be able to make sure that what is in those recommendations is following uh, the CDC guidelines. And because nobody at the Department of Commerce are health officials, we want to be able to make sure that some additional review of that. And that's what you will see when you go to the Back to Business website and you look at the, the current um, best practices that are on that website. It really does indicate all of, the, um, all of the guidance that had come as recommendations from the advisory group. So those best practices that are there include a general business best practice where it's overall, if, if a business doesn't fall into a specific industry category, these are kind of things that, you know, we, we really want Maryland businesses to understand that we're looking for overall as we move into a healthier recovery. There's also on that page, the manufacturing best practice, the personal services best practices, uh, the retail best practices, golf and marinas, which were the first two that the governor announced almost two weeks ago. So we, we will obviously continue to move forward with that. But what has, been, um, what has been communicated to all of the advisory groups and all of their members through myself and my team is that we do not anticipate and nor do we expect that recovery is going to begin and end with the opening of the doors to the business. So the first phase of these advisory groups was to be able to discuss how to reopen. And that was the first priority, is how are we going to get them reopened? How are we going to get them to avoid barriers to that reopening process? Everything from the safe standards to you know, possibly working on um, how to get the workforce back into the businesses and off of unemployment. So, we have communicated that we will continue to have conversations um, as we move through the different recovery phases to get the business community back to where they need to be and um, creating their own um, economic realities as well. Great, thank you so much. I think that was great context for our membership and we very much look forward to continuing to engage in that process and being as helpful as we can moving forward. 
Um, one question that we got, have been getting a lot in the course of the last week um, has to do with the Maryland Small Business COVID-19 Relief Grant and Loan Programs being administered at the state level. Um, and we know that the online application or the application process for those programs closed in early April, end of March, early April. And some of our members have touched base with us having seen articles suggesting that a very large portion of that may not have yet made its way into the hands of business owners for a whole lot of understandable reasons or they've submit, they themselves have submitted applications for those programs that they're still waiting to hear back on. And we're, I think they're just wondering if you could speak to that process and what progress is being made on getting those funds into the hands of small, particularly small business owners. And then we also had a member ask if Commerce is considering reopening the application process if it is determined that all the funds haven't been accounted for. Sure, um, and that is a very valid question. I will say that um, having to start an entire new program from the very beginning and put up additional um, IT systems, workflow processes starting on March 23rd was a challenge for the department on uh, many levels, including you know, the IT systems themselves, but then also uh, recruiting and onboarding about 150 volunteers from our sister agencies. So not only did our staff have to learn this, this new system that was put in place to accommodate these 30,000 plus applications that came in between the grants and the loan program. Uh, we, had, we had to teach everybody else how to work through this brand new workflow process as well. With the understanding that we also had to um, uh, put in certain um, transparency and monitoring, monitoring type of protocols to be able to make sure that we were uh, working with those, um, those most eligible applications. So from the very beginning, we had told our constituents that we were working with the applications on a first come first serve basis. For the relief grants themselves, there were 20,000 plus applications that had come in. Um, so working from March 23rd and March 24th, we had a little over 5,000 applications that came in. Um, not all of them had been deemed eligible, uh, but most of them have. So if applicants have put in their application between March 23rd and March 24th, they should have received an email and indication from the Department of Commerce as to their approval process. So right now, all of the applications in those time periods have gone through their initial review phase. All of the other applications have also gone through an initial review phase. However, on the 23rd and the 24th, they are progressing through the system in order to be able to get those, those final reviews from the financial data that had to be reviewed in order to be able to accommodate them. And right now, with the additional volunteers that are up and running, we are putting out and sending out roughly between 200 and 300, depending on the day and how complicated some of the applications have been, um, sending those grant agreements out to um, applicants so that they can get the grant agreements in their email, get them signed, and get them back to the state so that we can get them processed for checks coming from our comptroller's office. So that's where we are with that active process right now. Um, and I, I give our team, quite honestly, uh, big kudos. I, probably people on this call don't want to hear that, but, but they have worked tirelessly day and night to try to get this system um, operating in the most efficient way. And um, so in, in a matter of a very short period of time, they have been able to do that. Uh, so it's actively um, in a forward progress right now to be able to get all of the funds out the door. Uh, we do not anticipate that obviously all 20,000 loans or grants are, are going to be um, uh, utilized or the applications will not be able to be funded. Um, if you do the math, most grants that are coming in are requesting the full $10,000 and uh, there's $50 million in the fund, which means that roughly 5,000 applicants will be able to get funding from this. We left the application process open until April 6th in the event that should we get additional funds um, at some point in time that these applications would have already gone through the process and then it would be a much quicker um, turnaround because they have gone through an initial review. I will say one of the, um, 
one of the unanticipated consequences of the application process was that many of the applications that came in needed to have a resolution process because of the applications not being filled out properly or uh, missing additional information or perhaps the smallest of the small business not knowing the type of financial information that they would they would need to put forward. So we put together a resolutions team which uh, was able to identify those um, those small businesses that needed additional assistance so that they could send in additional information um, so that we could resolve those eligibility requirements for those businesses. Perfect. That's great. And I think that um, outlines very nicely the, the answer to the question and we'll give our members some direction and some um, peace of mind as we move through this process. And also wanted to compliment your team as well because they've been a pleasure to work with. And I know it's not easy building the plane as we're flying it and we're all doing the very best we can to serve the constituencies that we do. Um, we have you for an another four minutes. And so I wanted to end on sort of a high level question and, and some closing out remarks. And um, it's one that I think um, would be a nice point for us to end on. And that is sort of what high level advice would you give to businesses and business owners? One, for those who are able to be moving into phase one of recovery based on their industry or based on where they are in the state, and then also, what advice would you give to businesses that are still waiting? What should they be thinking about or doing or preparing for as they wait for that green light? Well, that's, that's a great question. I would say to those who are able to open in some capacity at this point in time, my advice would be to have that great communication with your employees and the general public. I think one of the concerns that we hear from businesses is that there's not going to be that comfort level of um, the general public to come back to work and in some cases um, for the employees to come back to work. So the more that we can assure and make everybody comfortable to come back to our business entities, the better off we all will be. And um, I, I see that those businesses that are being very public about the, the efforts that they're taking in order to be able to provide that healthy environment is, um, is, is working very well for them and it will continue to. And I, I will also say for those that are still waiting for the governor um, to uh, reopen some of the other phases, work at this, look at the general business um, best practices that we have on the website. There's going to be very specific industry, you know, um, type, of, um, type of guidance that, that may come out for businesses. But if you look at a general best practice on what you can do to prepare your facility, prepare your employees, prepare yourselves for what is going to be the inevitable type of best practices that will be used, those best practices are, are not going to vary all that much unless there's something very specific about your industry. So understand that. Understand that you, you may have to have new cleaning uh, processes. Understand that there may need to be different hand washing stations, um, et cetera, or um, different types of, of face coverings, for example. And prepare yourself now so that when the governor does make the announcement about some additional reopenings, you have that preparation and you can be ready to go. Perfect. Well, we're right at the top of the hour. And again, Madam Secretary, I just want to thank you again to you and your team for your time, for your collaboration. And we look forward to continuing this conversation as the weeks and months go on and we prepare ourselves for, for economic recovery moving forward. Um, for everyone on the call, please, if you have additional questions or need assistance that either the Chamber of Commerce or the Department of Commerce can provide, um, reach out to us through the email addresses provided and we'll do our best to field those and get them to the appropriate place. And with that, everyone, please stay safe and well, and we'll see you on our next web event. Thank you very much, Ashley. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Be safe.